Hey there viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. So I was just getting ready to head home after a long day of work. My phone rings, it was my brother. Uh, I give him a call back. He's got a Ford Ranger up there, a Mazda pickup that's got some lean drivability problems. Um, that is not his forte. He works on you know farm machinery, big skidders and stuff like that and um, changes farm tires and that kind of stuff so he asked me if I'd come up and take a look at it for him uh, so yeah I told him certainly would we're just getting ready to leave so I grabbed a scan tool grabbed a bandage grabbed a test light grabbed some brake clean because you never want to go to a Diag without it particularly if it's got some lean codes um, and that's it so that's where we're going all right now anybody that knows me knows that I have a slight ice cream addiction and it just happens to be an ice cream store in between my house and work so I kind of got to pull over. I never fail. Stop at the ice cream store. Somebody always corners you. Hey pal, let me ask you something. So we just had a little lesson in TPMS sensors while waiting for the ice cream. Now off to my brothers. So a lot of people in our videos ask us about you know why our cars are so rusty and why they're so dirty. That's because this is our roads. Um, you know, this is, I don't want to say the majority, but there's a lot of folks that live out here in the country. Uh, you know, this is farmland, so uh, this is what you get. You get a lot of gravel roads, you know, dirt roads, back roads. But this is, this is it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some folks that never seen a dirt road. I was down in uh, Staten Island here for a couple days. There's no dirt roads down there unless they're doing construction. But, so this is kind of the MO. So uh, they salt these roads uh, quite a bit in the summertime too to keep the dust down. So that's why I've mentioned before that we get salt year round. Uh, Cause that's what they'll do. They'll come out with salt brine trucks and they'll spray the roads and it's absolutely awful uh, because it only lasts for like two days. <laughs> and then it's dusty again, but now it's salty dust. But that's the price you gotta pay if you wanna live out here. I guess if you don't live out here, I guess you should be thankful for places like this because this is where your food comes from. All right, so we made it. We've got a Mazda B3000 dual sport, whatever that means. So it's a six cylinder, three liter. And it's an O2. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and throw the scan tool on it, see what we have for codes, and take it from there. All right, guys, so we got a new toy here. This is the new OTC Encore. So I've been playing with it a little bit. I've had it plugged into about five different cars so far. And it seems to work quite well. So we'll try it on this. Hopefully, I'm not too fumbly with it. All right, it's going to be base model. I guess it doesn't matter. You know if this is a DS or base model, Scott? I think it is. You think it's a DS? Uh, Does it say on the tailgate or anything? It doesn't say. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll just, it shouldn't matter too much. We'll just pick the regular base model here. With the engine controller, this is a stick or automatic. automatic. Two. Oh, it's two wheel drive? Yeah. Alright. Let that load up. Hopefully, there's not too much glare on there. Want to go read codes, and we'll just do. Uh, is the engine light on? Was it when it was running? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we've got, uh, of course, we're classic P1000 on a Ford. Well, you guys can see that just because the monitors aren't set. And then we've got a lean code on bank two. Um, he did fire it up when I got here. It sounded to me like we got a dead miss. So we'll go in here and we'll pull up some. Uh, we'll pull up some data. I don't know if there's misfire monitors on these or we'll have to. Might have to go to mode six. Uh, let's see here. Engine data. We got field data. Oh, each of two data. Tool's pretty new to me, so you have to bear with me. When you select your data items, it goes through a little little countdown there. But we'll pull up our um, we'll pull up our field trims here. See what they look like right off. Yeah, short term, let's see. Alright, we'll grab 
those. We'll just take a quick peek. All right, you want to go ahead and fire it up, Scott? So we'll see what our fuel trims look like here initially. <laughs> about uh, 2,000 RPMs if you can. So, yeah, fuel trim shooting right off the chart. All right, that's good. All right, see our short term corrected back to zero. Uh, let's do some, uh, do some checking here. You go ahead and shut out. Let's see, turn the key back on, Scott. I don't know, I'm not familiar enough with this tool right yet to know if we can get to any, um, we can get to any mode six stuff. Let's just go OBD2. Better turn that dinger off, people on my channel go crazy about that. <laughs> see here. I've never used this portion of the tool so I don't know how long it takes or if we've got to back out of having it entered in as a Mazda with a key on. Ah, common rookie mistake. Let's try this again. So yeah, so far I've been super impressed with this tool. This thing has been just phenomenal. Alright, so let's go to mode 6. See, I think it's a test PID 53, I think is what we want to look at. See if the misfiring cylinder is on bank 2 also, it likely is. So you got to keep in mind, uh, like a dead miss with a spark plug will just cause that cylinder to pump air. Oh uh, gosh, let's see. I did not have my head on Mitchell with me. Let's see, 53. Okay, so there's, okay, so let's test pit 53. 53. Well, I think, I think I'm in the right one. I could, I could be wrong on that. Those are all showing displays of zero. What's the one up here that failed? Pit 2B. I'm not familiar with that. Well, folks, we're not going to be able to use that. I don't have anything to uh, look this up on. I thought it was I thought it was uh, TID 53, which was our misfires. It shows all the way up cylinder six, I thought. But all right, well, we'll just attack this another way. Let's take a move my camera. Well, I just got thinking it probably doesn't have any uh, mode six data because. Uh, the engine light's been reset, so the truck's had plugs, wires, and an ignition coil put on it in an effort to fix this. Um, but if I remember right, I'm not super familiar with the Mode 6 data, but it takes some time to start building the data, and obviously if it had that data, it would have thrown a misfire code. Uh, so at this point, we're just going to identify uh, Bank 2. Um, I feel naked without my uh, computer with me, so we can see. Uh, you know, I can look up some of this stuff, but uh, we'll identify Bank 2 and then see if we can chase down the lean code or find out what cylinder's misfiring uh, with the tools we have to work with and then, and then take our diagnosis from there. Never leave home without it. Uh, you guys know I love my brake clean. Uh, being that we've got the fuel trimmed uh, that's climbing uh, right off the chart, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just obviously check it for vacuum leak. Uh, these intakes on these are pretty prone to leak. Um, we don't have a smoke machine, so we're gonna use some good old fashioned brake parts cleaner. Hopefully we won't explode, uh, but if we do, it's that uh, viral video we always talk about. So we'll take and check. This is bank two. Uh, cylinder number one's over here on the passenger side. Cylinder two's over here, or bank two's over here. Cylinder two's on bank one, if that confuses everybody. 
I think. I think they go one, two, three, four, five, six, or something thereabouts. But this is bank two over here. Um, so I'm going to pull up our uh, fuel trim pids again, and then we'll spray it down and see if we have any change, uh, and see if we have a vacuum leak that's so bad that's affecting just you know like our single cylinder uh, to get our misfire there. Go ahead and start it up, Scott. Got our light, got our fuel trim pulled up over there. We're just going to base this probably off how the engine runs. So we'll see what we find. Can't really get to the underside of this plenum because of the way it's made. We could probably blaze some up under there. If it leaks bad enough, it'll uh, we'll know it. So yeah, go ahead and fire it up. Still really high at like 30%. But I don't think I hit any hit anything magical yet. Like I said, I think if the leak was uh, big enough, just getting this under the intake, uh, we'd see a change for sure. I see our PCV elbow is uh, collapsing down, but that would affect both banks. change there. Uh, I think probably if you guys noticed in the beginning of the video when we raised the RPM, the long-term fuel trim was still really positive. So that's kind of an indicator it's not a vacuum leak, but um, if we didn't check for a vacuum leak, somebody would have went crazy on the video. So that's what we did. I did not bring my secondary ignition pickup with me. I brought brake clean. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can identify what cylinder it is, that way we kind of know where to go from there. Plus, I just kind of want to know are we dealing with just a single cylinder miss or you know what's the story. Let me grab my test light. We'll pull the wires off, we'll short out one cylinder at a time. We know it's on bank two, or at least we suspect it's on bank two. It would be I'd be surprised if it's on bank one. We could be dealing with two problems, but let's figure out what cylinders it is first. That way we know if we're chasing two, two symptoms, two problems. All right, Scott, go ahead and fire it up again. Why don't you take and, uh, you want to hold it right in here for me? Can I put it first before put on brakes? Yeah, we'll just hold it. We'll hold it in gear. It makes the skip a lot worse, a lot more pronounced. Okay. Now that cylinder. Stuck her back on there. Okay. What do you think? This one? Possibly that one. Shut it off a second, Scott. 
Sure you don't have your firing order mixed up? You d did you double check it? Did you double check your firing order? Yeah. You did? Just just for the heck of it. Just start it up for the heck of it. I just want to see something here. Ready? Yep. Okay, shut it off. Uh-oh. I think he mixed up fire and order. Okay, go ahead and start it. Give her, give her a couple rev ups. Yeah, the back the back two on that coil pack. I just got them switched right now, so you're gonna have to straighten out your wires there. Yeah. Um, take them fired up real quick. We just want to look at field trims with. Yeah. One thing I don't like about this tool so far is when we when we back out of a menu. You all the way back. Well, you got to go back in and reselect if you had a custom data list, which is kind of annoying. So the snap-on keeps it. They're about the only one I know that does it. Our Autel does this also. Let's see here. All right. So our fuel trim, uh, our short term now is minus 23 and plus 25. So yeah, you can see right now also our total trim. So you're gonna be right about zero. And of course, bank one, uh, that was right on the money. So we can see that without even clearing a check engine light, we know this car is fixed because of our total fuel trim is essentially zero or thereabouts. They can hold it up again at a higher RPM if you could, Scott. So that's it. we'll take a look at this again under the same conditions we did the first time. I'm slowly going to make some corrections here until this all gets back to zero, but pretty simple uh, simple fix, and uh, we're able to see it right here on the scan tool and take care of the problem. All right, guys, so that's kind of a, you know, it's a mistake. It happens. Things happen. It's my brother, so I can bust his balls about it. Um, he just put the wires back on the way they were when he took them off and, you know, double-checked them like a bunch of times and is what it is but we did get to see that on a misfiring cylinder how it can it can it could send you on a wild goose chase i guess as far as chasing down a lean code uh, a couple things when we revved it up initially fuel trim stayed really positive uh so that you know like I say a, a vacuum leak will usually go away that you know higher you rev the engine uh you, you reduce manifold pressure and then you don't see your, your fuel trim uh you know your fuel trim will usually start to correct it'll start to go back towards zero in my experience uh, and then we also got to see how a misfiring cylinder or a cylinder that does not have any combustion process going on it all it does is pump air even though it pumps out or pumps raw gas you know it's pumping gas down on the convert or down the uh, pipe on the action sensor the action sensor doesn't care it still shows up as a lean uh, lean problem so uh, so we had two cylinders misfiring so that's why it was extremely lean because typically if you pull off like a spark plug wire and that cylinder is just pumping air now the fuel trims will crack like, I don't know, 15, 12, 15 percent, something like that. But we've seen like a 30 percent correction. That's what's pegged right out. Uh, and, and that's, of course, there's two cylinders misfiring. So that's it. We did get to check out the uh, OTC Encore a little bit. So you guys will be seeing that in a couple uh, more upcoming videos, I'm sure, as you get to play with it more. I like it. There's some features on it I don't, and I'm sure we'll get into those. So got this old John Deere backhoe in here. Looks like it's missing. Was it have sent out injection pump, Scott? Or? Yeah. So she, 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 she might have to dig her dig her own hole someday here. Get a little, get a little, get a little crusty. So we're 
what are you doing to the uh, John Deere back here? Uh, hydraulic pump. Oh, okay. The that is a 2640 John Deere. Actually has two hydraulic pumps. One in the transmission behind the clutch case yeah. that pumps the oil up to the main pump in okay. front of the motor. Now that's a pump right there, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So it's got like a transfer pump? Yes, uh, oh, okay. a lift pump. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I haven't put my flow meter on it yet, but I believe the transmission pump has gone. Oh, gotcha. Uh, just, hydraulics just don't work? Right. No, no hydraulics at all. No brakes, no steering. Oh, that should be fine. Yeah. All right, folks, that's it. I'm loaded up, gonna head back home. Gotta let my dogs out. I think that's a song, isn't it? Uh, but uh, yeah, my brother's a little bit embarrassed about the uh, about the plug wires. <laughs> Whatever, uh, is what it is. I'm not exempt from mistakes. I don't think you guys are either. He's certainly not. Um, and that's life. So hopefully we did learn a little bit in this video and some of the material. We did get to check out the OTC Encore, like I say, which we'll be using in some other videos. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that little guy so far um that's it check us out on google plus facebook as you already know subscribe to the channel if you haven't if you want to stay up to date with our latest content and i think that's it so just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching i just got home looks like the cat's got a big big kill over here what do you got butler get yourself a mouse huh sounds like your sisters want to come out and play you better hide your mouse because the dogs are coming out. <laughs>